For this former cotton town, which has been in decline for most of the century, the success of Blackburn Rovers means everything. And this here in and throwing things at us, but we don't care. We've done it and we've worked for it and we deserve it. It means, it means the world to me, it means the world to the town. It puts the town on the map, puts Blackburn on the map. Uh, you couldn't ask for more, really. Absolutely brilliant. The Premiership title will mean a cash windfall for Rovers in sales of shirts and souvenirs. Some return for the £60 million pounds which local steel millionaire Jack Walker spent on the club. If there's anybody deserves to get a return, um, it's Mr Walker. And uh, full credit to the man for pitching in as, as he has and uh, fully deserves everything he gets from it. Some fans have been queuing for three hours for tonight's celebrations. A small sacrifice for a club which waited 81 years to win the title. There may not be room for all the supporters, and that'll almost certainly mean another night of record takings in the town's pubs. Kevin Bacay, BBC News, at Ewood Park in Blackburn. Rating a momentous victory, and this evening we salute that achievement. That's Granada tonight. So, a good evening to you and a very, very warm welcome to the programme. Yes, good evening. Now, unless you've been in Outer Mongolia for the last 24 hours, it can't possibly have escaped your notice that Blackburn Rovers are the new champions of the Football Premier League. So, first tonight, we're joining our man in Blackburn, Paul Crone, reporting live from Ewood Park. Paul. Yes, good evening, Lucy, and a very, very warm welcome to Ewood Park, the home of Blackburn Rovers. Now, as you can see, just a few minutes ago, the gates opened here and thousands upon thousands of Rovers fans are pouring into the, being, the ground. They've been queuing outside since half past four this afternoon. Me and Barry, the cameraman, popped down earlier on and the queue must have been a mile long. Unbelievable. The reason they are here is to see their heroes, Blackburn Rovers, parade the Premiership trophy here at Ewood later on this evening, round about 8.40. I've seen uh, Tim Flowers and Alan Shearer already turned up, so they're going to be here in good strength. The crowd absolutely amazing. The scenes outside absolutely extraordinary. Tonight, there's going to be fireworks, bands, dancers, you name it, they'll be here. We'll be talking to some of the fans later on. We'll be getting in amongst them to see what their reaction is today. Amazing scenes in Blackburn last night, as you're about to hear and see. So, from a very noisy Ewood Park, join us later on, back to the studio. Thanks, Paul. Well, there might be thousands in the ground tonight. Last night, there were thousands and thousands in the streets of the town. It's been an agonising few weeks, you know, for Rovers fans. Many thought the title might just go to Old Trafford, but Kenny Dalgleish and his dream team pulled it off to the delight of their fans. Paul Crome was there to savour the atmosphere. They hung from traffic lights. They stood proud through car sunroofs and on top of them. They celebrated outside Anfield, outside Ewood, outside pubs and outside their homes. Never, but never, has Blackburn seen anything like this. The main road to Ewood Park was jammed with cars and fans alike, and they seemed quite content with their lot. Well into the night, Rovers fans made the most of an 81-year gap since their last title win. It wasn't time to pontificate about their success. I gave up very early on. The night belonged to the supporters. We haven't seen anything. Nothing quite like it. It's uh, been absolutely magnificent. Brilliant. Absolutely. It's just here for about an hour to get here. Brilliant. I've never seen this before. Rovers may have lost at Anfield yesterday, but with Manchester United only managing a draw, celebrations got swiftly underway. It's wonderful, it's a dream come true, we've waited a lifetime for this. In fact, my great granddad were alive last time we won this one. It's brilliant. It's a fairy tale, an absolute fairy tale. For the players, it had been an agonising 90 minutes. All were utterly drained as they'd thought the title had evaded them at the last moment. The last, the last probably six or seven weeks have probably been unbearable. I wouldn't wish on any footballer. It's been hard, but we've, we've coped extremely well and we've had our ups and downs. But um, today is certainly a big up. It's great for us, it's great for the public of Blackburn. We said we're, not the, we're not in the most fashionable area of Britain, but it's like a home to me. There's still a bit of shock here. I mean, to see uh, where we've come from and how quickly we've got here. Um, although I think it's deserved, there's still a wee bit of uh, 
the show. I'm quite happy. And uh, it's good. I say it's good for this. Good for the town. It's good for me. Good for my family. We're, we're all happy. Happy was sort of the word to describe the scenes in Blackburn yesterday. Fans just couldn't contain their joy, but knew it had been a close-run thing. No one wanted to go through another 90 minutes of footballing torture as Manchester United strove to score that elusive winning goal. But if you finish top of the Premier League, then you're simply the best team in England. in just a few minutes time fans will get a proper chance to pay tribute to Alan Shearer and the rest of the players as the team parades the Premiership trophy at Ewood Park. Certainly an unforgettable night for everyone involved, but how did it all come about? The season you'll remember started way back in August last year, but few people would have predicted it would go right to the final whistle of that final game. Here's Rob Palmer with the details of yesterday's dramatic finale. Just to put it all into context, last time Rovers won the league title, the First World War was just about to start. The club is steeped in history, a founder member of the Football League, but they dropped out of the old First Division in 1966, the year, of course, that England won the World Cup. And they were in Division 3 as recently as 15 years ago. Then along came lifelong fan Jack Walker, multi-millionaire whose money was, well, burning a hole in his pocket. He wanted to see his beloved team back at the top of the pile, and nothing was going to stand in his way. Here's Paul again with the background to the rise and fall and rise of the Rovers. Accrington Stanley, Preston North End and Bolton Wanderers. The league was formed on the 17th of April 1888 and this remarkable if somewhat unsophisticated footage shows Rovers playing at Ewood Park against West Bromwich Albion some 10 years later. Incidentally, Rovers won 4-1. A far cry from Rovers' magnificent new stadium in 1995, which bears testament to Rovers' place at the very top of English football. Overnight, Rovers went from an ordinary First Division side to a Premier League side and the focus of the football world. Even the match programme, or match magazine as it's known, has a slick professional look. The latest technology is used to create a glossy product that fussy football fans demand these days, but you still need that human touch. Yeah, that, that's quite good there. Oh, oh that's fine, yeah. yeah. Back for the last 10 minutes. Good action shot of Henry there. And you won't just find Rovers fans in Blackburn. Rovers fans are spreading the name of Blackburn Rovers right across the world. In fact, almost in every programme, we have pictures that are submitted to us uh, from... Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, America, of, people's, of people wearing Rovers shirts, Rovers hats, all sorts of things. The older Blackburn fan will remember this man, Dave Whelan, who made 87 appearances for Rovers, including the 1960 Cup final in which he broke his leg and had to be stretched off. Now he's a hugely successful businessman, but recalls his footballing days with Rovers with great affection. I was just in awe for a while when I went there because I was... I was coming up through the ranks, just like uh, Ron Clayton, Brian Douglas, Peter Dobin, Roy Vernon, and we had a great team then. A winning soccer team is a handy weapon to have in your arsenal when you're trying to put a place on the map. These days it's not a case of uh, Blackburn, it's somewhere on the M6, isn't it? But ah, Blackburn, Alan Shearer, Kenny Dalgleish. The leader of Blackburn Borough Council, a Rovers fan since he was six, is making the most of the good times. It's uh, very useful to our business people when they go abroad and people now know where Blackburn is without it having to be explained to them. In, in, in fact, what the Rovers have done for us is put us on the map. Down at the local newspaper, there's never any problem filling the back pages. Peter White, who's covered the club for 25 years, believes Rovers are back where they belong. 
a really person in Blackburn seems to be wearing a blue and white shirt and, and in the surrounding towns as well and they've had games this season where they've done special deals for schools and there's been two and a half thousand school children turned up at matches and uh, there is everybody, or the only thing that everybody's talking about is Blackburn Rovers and uh, that's great and it's lifted the whole community, there's no doubt about that. Sometimes football isn't such a funny old game though, not funny at all. Rovers became the first ever club to appear in three successive playoffs for promotion from the second division but miss out on each occasion. Days like this against Crystal Palace are difficult to forget but demonstrate only too clearly the thin line between success and failure. 1991 proved to be one of the most significant years in the long and distinguished history of Blackburn Rovers. Along came a man who would literally change the club's fortunes forever. But he wasn't a manager and he wasn't even a player. He was just a man who was a fanatical fan of Blackburn Rovers. Oh, and he had a bit of money too. Jack Walker has proved to be Blackburn's personal banker, a multimillionaire who provides what seems to be unlimited sources of money for players to be bought. Walker's money coincided with the arrival of Kenny Dalgleish, who set about building a team that could take Rovers to the very top. The Scotsman's low-key approach has transformed the club, but it hasn't always gone down well amongst footballing pundits. The fans recognise that Kenny's there to do a job, and as long as he does that job, which means that Blackburn Rovers winning, then uh, they're happy. And uh, I wouldn't say it's a low profile as such, that when he has something to say, something worthwhile, he says it. Ewood Park has waited a very long time for a day such as this, and so has its fans. Over the next few days, they're going to enjoy every moment of their success. Man United fans, I'm afraid, are going to have to eat humble pie, and plenty of it. For a family club like Blackburn Rovers to win the league, I think it's firstly great for East Lancashire, and secondly, I think it's great for the game. Well, our resident football expert Jim Beglin was a teammate of Kenny Dalgleish and a member of the double winning team when Dalgleish was manager of Liverpool. So Jim, what sort of man is Kenny Dalgleish? Well, professionally speaking, Lucy, he's an out-and-out -out winner. He was a genius when he played football. He's a, he's a pretty shrewd manager, too. He commands respect, which has been proven from his players this season. And the achievement, really, at Blackburn is fantastic because in under four years, they've come from the old second division and won the, the major championship. But it is rare still to see him with a smile like that on his face. I think that's it? publicly. Believe me, behind the scenes, he, he's got quite a, a zany sense of humour. He loves a practical joke. And I can remember shortly before we played Luton in an FA Cup tyres that we were supposed to play them, the game was postponed. But the lads asked him to, to keep a joke going, to wind one of the players up, a lad called Alan Irvin, in pretending the game went ahead. So we had a pretend team meeting. He picked a pretend <laughs> team in which he was given this lad his debut. And he was overcome by nerves, went into the toilet, and when he came out, we'd all picked our bags up and gone home. And oh, no so, so Kenny likes to laugh, believe me, behind the scenes. Brilliant. Well, that's a rare insight into the, the man behind the uh, quite cautious public figure. Yeah, quite, quite cautious, but believe me, he's, uh, he's one of the lads. Great. Jim, thank you very much indeed. Bob. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Jim. We'll be joining Paul again live at Ewood Park. Just to the sports news. Yes, it's hard to escape the atmosphere here. I can tell you quite rightly the Blackburn celebrations go on. But at Old Trafford, as you say, Manchester United have been coming to terms with the loss of their championship. Shares in the company fell sharply after the 1-1 draw with West Ham, which of course handed the title to Blackburn Rovers. So United can now look ahead to Saturday's FA Cup final against Everton. Charlie Lambert, the man probably with the tiredest vocal cords in Lancashire.